Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Mom and Baby Gnome and I'm sipping on some peach tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, purple violet, fire red, deep yellow, fallow green, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number 10 round synthetic brush, and a number three round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout the painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our background. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make myself a nice soft gradient from a light blue at the top to an even lighter blue down at the bottom. I'm going to be using left to right brush stroke and I'm going to be using just blue and white. So what I'm going to do is I've already pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed. All I did was I added a little bit of white into my cobalt blue and I'm really just looking for a nice springtime or summertime kind of light sky blue type of a color, but you could really, you, this doesn't even have to look like it's outdoors. You could certainly make yours in whatever atmosphere that you want. Maybe you want your gnome to be inside or it's raining or whatever you want. So once I've got the blue that I want, I'm gonna be using this left to right type of brush stroke. I'm covering the entire top of the canvas, probably about a third of the way down I'm going to come with just this light blue and then once I've come down about a third of the way then what I'll do is I'm going to start adding white paint to my brush and that will help me to create a nice gradient going lighter and lighter as I go down the canvas. So this is pretty good. It's about a third of the way down my canvas. Now I'm going to pick up my light blue plus white on my brush. So I have both light blue and white on my brush and this will start that gradient process. And again, I'm just going back and forth, left to right. I cross over those two sections of color so they can work with each other and kind of nicely intermingle with one another. And then as I'm coming down here, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up white with a tiny bit of my light blue, not much. So as I work my way down the canvas, I'm going heavier on my white. And that way, again, it will allow me to get this real nice gradient as it's going from the top to the bottom of my canvas. And you could also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas if you wanted to wrap that color right around. Now what I'm doing is I'm just picking up white on my dirty brush. So whatever remnants of light blue 
remain inside my bristles will now work themselves off onto my canvas. So this bottom will end up being a really light shade of blue. If yours goes all the way white, that's totally fine. You can, again, really make this into whatever color pattern or color scheme that you would like. Um, and then once I get it done, I just kind of like to go back and forth, give myself a nice blend as that paint is drying. You can work it back and forth, left to right. You can even kind of go diagonal to get these colors to kind of mix in with one another and blend really well with one another. And if you felt like you wanted to do a second coat, you certainly can. Or if this is good enough for you, then it's then it's good enough. And then what we're gonna do for the next step, we'll be using our pencil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our gnomes. I'm gonna be using my pencil. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So I'm going to be guiding you through a very basic outline for these two gnomes with shapes and markers and we'll connect the markers and by the time we're done we'll have something that's really fun and simple for us to paint in during the painting process. So we're not going to be doing any little details, just some basic shapes so we can color them in. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to start it with my mama gnome's nose. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and say that one three times fast. So it's going to be I'm going to start pretty much in the center of my canvas. The nose is going to be higher than the, than the center, but it's going to be right in the middle. The bottom of the nose is going to be right in the center of my canvas. So if you find left to right your center and top to bottom your center, you can make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to go up about three inches from that make myself another marker. You could go for a, a very circular type of nose. Mine's going to be a little bit wider than it is um, tall. So if I take the height of my nose like this and then just go um, kind of center that and then I can make myself a little bit of a mark outside of that length. This is going to give me a little bit of an oval shape. So I'm about three and a half inches wide, three inches tall. And of course you could certainly make yours a different size or a different shape than mine. I don't think there are two gnomes that noses that are exactly alike. So you can have fun with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build off of that initial shape. So I'm going to start with her hat. So the it's going to be kind of just drooping on the top of her nose. So I'm gonna have one edge of it. If I go to the right from the top of her nose, I would stop short maybe about an inch and a half to two inches from the edge of the canvas and go up a little bit. This is gonna be the edge of my hat and it's about an inch tall. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the left hand side, but it's gonna be a little bit different shaped. So I'm gonna come over from my nose in through here and I'm not gonna go up, I'm gonna just stop maybe about two and a half to three inches away from the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna give myself another little marker in through here. And now I'm gonna just give myself a fun kind of ripply type of shape for the bottom portion of that, um, of that hat. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'll do the same thing for the top. So this does not have to be the same exact um, ripples as the bottom. You can really just make this into whatever you'd like it to be. It can be, you know, big and fluffy. It can be skinny, whatever you've imagined it to be. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself the top part of the hat. So I'm going to come in from here, maybe about an inch, give myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna go up to the top of my canvas, go to left about an inch. This is gonna be the exterior side of the, of the hat. So again, this can be really fun and just bumpy and have a lot of ripples to it. So don't feel that yours has to be exactly as mine. And then I'm gonna have it on this left-hand side kind of coming down to a point. So the point of my hat is going to be to the left of here, and then I'm gonna be down. I would say if this is halfway down my canvas, I'm about an inch or two below that, and I'm in from the edge of my canvas about an inch and a half. 
Then what I'm going to do is I want this to kind of tuck behind the edge of my hat in through there. Actually, I think I want to bring this down. I feel like I want this kind of down a little bit droopier. So I'm going to bring, this is the beauty of pencils. We get to kind of make it into whatever we want. So I'm just bringing this. I feel that it would look a little bit cuter if it was tipped a little bit more. I'm going to erase this little line in through here. There we go. And I can erase this too. <laughs> so that works for me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to, I'm going to come in here about an inch. So something like that. And then this little point is going to go all the way up to the top. So I'm going to come to the left of here, maybe about an inch and a half somewhere in through here and I'll connect here to up here with again a really long just kind of wavy bumpy a bumpy kind of line that's going to give me some good movement to my hat and then I'll have a little inside kind of sliver to my hat as well so I'm going to come in here maybe about two inches or so and then just kind of bring this up and then back down when it comes back down it should look like it's kind of trailing into this one in through here the back side of that so that's going to be the top part of my mama. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself the um, the exterior portion of my of my mom. So it's going to be her hair. So I'm going to come from the inside of her nose and then I'm going to come in from here maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. This is going to be her braids coming down. I'm going to have this left one coming down to about here but it's going to kick out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of little bumps coming down the edge like this and however many bumps I do on one side I'm going to do the same number of bumps on the other side and they don't have to be perfect you can have them kind of going in whatever which way you want I want this to kind of curl up on this side and have like a little kind of place that it kicks out where it's been like tied so I'm just going to kind of close it off like that like this is the little part that's been braided and then on this side I'm going to do a similar exercise so come in from here it should be at least in as far as the top part of your hat um, not farther because I think it would be clenched underneath the hat um, so that's why I'm going to come in at least as far as that maybe even a little bit further so something like that and then in through here it's going to come by that side of the nose and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to have it coming down to about here is the bottom of the braid so I'm just going to give myself some bumps like this and do the same thing on the other side trying to keep a similar number of bumps but again if it goes awry and you don't have the same number it's okay and then just kind of give myself a little bit of a thought for the dot for the bottom part and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her um, the bottom part of her dress and her shoes so I'm going to come up if this is about halfway I'm going to come to about well let's go from the bottom of the braids let's come up from the bottom of the braids maybe about an inch and a half to two inches somewhere in this vicinity and somewhere in we'll call it like this vicinity in through here and I really just wanted to kind of kick out down towards the ground so I'm going to be maybe an inch away from the bottom of my canvas and in maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and then the same thing on this side so up about an inch and maybe in about an inch and a half I can connect these again with just a, a nice wavy line like she's got a pretty gnome dress that she's wearing <laughs> it doesn't have to be the same as mine and then when I connect these two I'm going to give two bumps where the feet are going to go so I'm going to bring this in through here I'm going to bump it up for one foot I'm going to bring it in through here bump it up for another foot and then come over here now I just need to close off her feet so I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit in through here and bring this down just a little bit and close it off like that now I just need to make her hands so I'm gonna have her hands we will consider this to be like her waist in through here and I like to make my gnome hands kind of like mittens so I'm gonna make a couple of mittens right about in through here so I'm gonna give like a little thumb and then the hand portion like that and then I'm gonna come over here give myself a little thumb and the hand per piece like that I'm going to give her a couple of arms so all I need to do is give myself a couple of little curved lines going towards or underneath that braid something like that and something like that and they don't have to be exactly the same they could be positioned a little bit different now I'm going to draw my little baby gnome so I'm going to come down 
from my mom's nose, probably, I would say about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in this vicinity. My gnome nose is going to be, if this was about three inches, I'm going to have my gnome nose about half the height of that wide, and then it's going to be, so I'm going to have it about an inch and a half wide and an inch tall. So I'm going to come down about an inch and a half, but you can place yours differently than mine. It's totally up to you. If you feel that your hands are closer or farther, you can certainly make your baby bigger or smaller. It's up to you how you want to build it. And then I'm just going to give myself a little oval for his nose. I'm going to build him the same way I built mom, which is going to give a little bit of a hat edge on top of that nose. So something like this. Then I'm going to give him a little, I'm calling him a him. I don't know if it's a him. He's wearing purple. He's going to be wearing purple, so it might be a him. It might be a her. You can make your gender of your baby gnome whatever you want. I have a tendency to call little um, things, little baby things, hymns, perhaps because I have a son. So maybe I'm a little biased when it comes to small people and small beings. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little section for the hair. He's not, or this one's not going to have little braids, but I'm going to just kind of at least section out some, some area that I'm going to have for some hair. This is all going to be the garment. It, it's going to be um, sucking on a pacifier as well, so that'll take up that. We're going to put the pacifier on later. And then I'm just going to come down and give it the bottom part of the dress, so maybe halfway in those hands, come down maybe about an inch or so, come down maybe an inch, inch and a half. And then I'm going to do the bottom the same as mom. So just kind of bring it in, bump it for a foot, bring it in, bump it for a foot, and then just kind of close off the bottom of the feet. And then you can make any little adjustments that you want for this. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our clothing, which would be the hats and the um, dresses and the shoes. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are thallo green, black, white, and purple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of custom colors for these um, pieces of clothing. And then, oh, and I'm going to use brown as well. And then I'll be, I'm just going to be painting my shoes with, with brown. So I'm going to start with my mom. I'm going to be using this custom green that I created. So how I got to this was I used my thallo green. I added a touch of black and a touch of white into it. You don't need to add a lot of the black and the white. You could even just go with the thallo green as is. I just wanted to make mine a little bit softer looking and have a, a little bit better opacity, so I, in essence, added gray to it. And that's going to be the color for her hat and dress, so I just have that color on my brush. When I go uh, to paint it in, in areas that are going to be bumping into another section of the same color, I'll leave a little bit of a, visual, a visible space between those two um, sections. So when I go to color them in um, with all of my details, I won't get confused. So like I'm doing the, the rim of the hat right now. And then when I go to do um, the top of the hat, there's gonna be a couple of areas that meet or um, are touching the same color. So I will just kind of leave myself just a little bit of a visual gap. You don't need to do much and if you accidentally don't leave a visual gap that's okay. I will walk you through um, making sure that you can see the difference between those two areas when we go to paint it in with all of the details in a little bit. And same thing with over here. So just a teeny bit of a little bit of a gap. And again, doesn't have to be much, just something where you will have your own visual cue when you go to paint in the details as to which piece is which. And I'm just bringing it right over my pencil mark. And if it appears to be a bit streaky or not completely painted all the way, don't worry about it because we've got lots of steps to go and we'll have ample opportunity to make this look like it's all nice and finished being painted. But because we did use the black and the white in our paint mixture, you should get pretty good coverage, um, especially if you use a good amount of paint. But again, 
if you see some streakiness, especially when you're in this center area because it is such a large area, you don't have to be terribly concerned about that. And if your, your hat reshapes while you do this, like mine will typically do a little bit, that's okay because this is just a nice organic, natural shape of some fabric that the more wrinkles and bumps and stuff in it, the more fun and natural it will look. I'm gonna just carry this color down into her clothing, down into here. So if you're going through one of these areas where you're trying to work around little pieces like his hair and stuff like that, if you wanted to, you could certainly pull out a smaller paintbrush, but again, we've got lots of stuff um, in addition to this that we'll be doing that will help to um, cover up any imperfections that may that may happen at this point. Same thing with her hand. I'm just kind of going right and her arm, right up to my other areas, but leaving that visual, little bit of a visual gap so I know myself where, where those separating points are. And again, just kind of working my way through here, trying not to get confused with my little sections, but if you get confused, it's all right, just, you know, let it dry. If you painted something that you weren't supposed to paint, you can let it dry and then just paint right over it. That's the beautiful part about acrylic. It is very forgiving and we can just work whatever, you know, boo-boos out if anything happens, or we just roll with it and let the accident be, be a beautiful part of our painting. <laughs> That's Sometimes those are the best parts, the parts that just happen accidentally and you know, make for our painting to be nice and special because it's unique in its own right. And then just gonna bring this down. I'm finishing her her clothing up with this color. And again, uh, I'm trying to where I know that it's gonna meet this a similar color or the same color like her arm in front of her, um, in front of the bottom dress part. I just left that little visual gap. And then as I'm going up towards um, the smaller gnome in through here, I can bring this color right up to that pencil mark because I know that those are not going to be similar colors so that you can certainly touch and overlap one another or just go, you know, completely hide that pencil mark. And then just bringing this all the way down. And once I've got the dress done, I'm going to be creating a custom color for my baby gnome. So I'll be using this same brush and of course as you go through this process if you want yours to have a different color scheme or if you want yours to be polka dotted or whatever the case may be make it your own it does not there's no rules that say that it has to be exactly as mine this is your fun endearing mom child gnome painting maybe you make it a father and, and a son you know or a father and a daughter whatever works for you is totally fine so i've got that done i'm going to wash and dry my brush and give myself a custom color for my um, baby gnome so wash and dry my brush i'm going to be using purple and white so all I did here was I took a tiny bit of white and just added it into my purple. Again, you can make this as light or as dark as you want. I'm just going for a nice medium tone for this color. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna paint in the hat portion because I want the hat to color coordinate with the, um, the clothing be it a jumpsuit or a dress or whatever you want to imagine that this baby gnome is wearing or pajamas, little night clothing that, that the baby's wearing. So whatever you want it to be, it, just imagine it to be whatever color. And then of course I'm leaving myself a little tiny gap where the um, top portion meets the, the rim so I can see that. I'm gonna leave the hair, I'm gonna paint this inside area in through here and just bring it right up to my gnome nose and just reloading my brush in through here, going right up to my mom's hands like this. And of course, if they get reshaped like mine just did, that's okay, because we've got to paint her hands so we can do any kind of reshaping uh, we need to. And I know that there's gonna be so many things like highlights and shadows and there's a, a pacifier and there's hair and there's all kinds of stuff that will help to make this painting look nice and finished. So in these earlier stages and in these earlier steps, the need for fine-tuned details is just not necessary, especially if 
you do have the the plan of doing those other um, steps on top of it. So I don't feel obligated to you know make it look finished right now. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to do a base coat on my shoes with brown paint. So just washed and dried my brush, picking up some brown paint. And again, don't need it to be perfect. Just want to have some kind of um, some kind of coat on there. I think I might give her a couple, like little um, soles of the shoes too. I think I'm going to bring this out just a little bit on each side. Just give myself a little bit more detail on these shoes. That was not totally necessary, but I, I, I felt I wanted it, so I did it. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Just kind of bringing it up, following my pencil mark. And then because I did that little thing on the other side, I'll do it over here too, just bumping out little soles to the, to the gnome shoes, like that. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can't, oh, I got to do my little baby feet too. Can't forget his little shoes. Um, once you've got this done, we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our skin and our hair. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, white, and brown. And I'm gonna make myself a nice tan color for the hair and a nice neutral kind of skin color for the nose and the hands. So I'm gonna first uh, pre-mix myself my skin, or I'll, I'll do the hair color first so you can see. So this is where I'm headed for the hair color. How I got to that was I used brown, where's my white, here's my white, <laughs> a little bit of white, and a touch of yellow. So this makes it into just like a nice golden tan type of color that we can utilize for the base coat of the hair. So again, I'm using my medium brush once I've got it in that vicinity, and of course you could make yours into whatever color you'd like. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint my hair. So I'm gonna start in this section up in through here. I don't need to do anything fancy other than kind of keep it in the um, area or the, the those kind of curved edges that we had initially done on the braided part. Um, when doing hair, it is, beneficial to move your brush in the direction that you feel the hair is falling. Even if you have a solid coat and your paint, you know, um, really covers well, just getting your mind and your brush to move in that direction that the hair is um, laying or falling will really help the process along and make it look a little bit more natural because you'll just always be moving that brush in a natural way to make it look nice and believable. I'm just going to put some little fluffy things on the end in through here and then I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I just loaded my brush. I'm going to go right up underneath this hat in through here and then just kind of pull it down. So that way again it's moving in the direction but on, on, a, on the step like this where we're still on the first step we're using a, a paint color that really covers well. The direction of your brush is not totally necessary, but again, it really just gets you into the mindset of doing that entire section in a way that is nice and natural, at least as natural as gnomes can be. <laughs> but if you're doing, you know, anything else with hair, any real, real things. And then I'm just gonna kind of fill in this center in through here and then I'll do the little fluffy stuff down at the bottom. So just again, just kind of giving myself these little frayed edges, making it go past my pencil mark a little bit so we don't have any of that pencil mark um, evident. And I'm gonna use the same color for the hair on my little gnome in through here. So this is just this section here and I'll just kind of flick it out as if it's maybe overlapping in oh, over the green part, but Again, we'll do more stuff that will help that along. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and get myself a skin color going. So wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna be using the that um, 
the brown, yellow, red, and white. So this is the skin color I'm going for. So how I got there was I used a little bit of white, a touch of yellow, a touch of red, and a little bit of brown, and then just started spinning it together. So once I spin it together, I can really adjust it however I want. That actually is looking pretty good, maybe a tiny bit more yellow into it. Um, if you wanted it lighter or darker or pinker or more yellow, you can certainly adjust it. It will get a little bit darker as it dries, so you can just plan for that. And we also still have highlights and shadows to go. So if this color does not end up the perfect skin tone that you want it to be, it's okay because you can adjust it after it dries and when we do those highlight and shadow parts as well. So just bringing it all the way to um, whatever the object is next to it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we've got plenty of st steps left to go, but this uh, of course is the um, kind of the final little pieces that need base coats on them. So you'll wanna make sure that you've got pretty much all the areas painted in once you've got these done. If you forgot a spot or anything like that, now would be the time to kind of go back and just make sure that you've that you've covered it. And if again, if you need to switch brushes and go for a littler brush when you're doing these smaller areas, feel free to do so. You don't always have to use the same size brush that I'm using. I just am comfortable using bigger brushes sometimes. So that's uh, my preference, but if you're going through this process and you feel that you want to use a smaller brush, feel free to do so. Whatever brush works for you is totally fine. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish mom's hat and her dress. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are black, white, and the custom green that we created. So what I'm in essence going to be doing is adding highlights and shadows to areas in order to show the contour of her hat will be highlights on the top and um, on the rim. Shadows will show where everything kind of dips in, like maybe we'll have a little shadow underneath the edge of the hat in through here. Maybe little shadows back behind this rim. Definitely going to put some shadows in this area in through here because I feel it would be shadowed by her nose, by her hair, by the baby. Um, so that'll be nice and shadowed in through there. We'll put some shadows underneath her arms, underneath the baby and then some highlights to make sure everything pops out the way it needs to pop out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my shadows first. So when I do my shadows, I'm gonna be using black and my custom green. If I needed to go a little bit deeper and darker, I'll use more black. If I needed to go a little bit more blended, I'll use more of the green. So I'm gonna start with black paint on my brush. I'm gonna do this little, um, part that hangs over the hat just to kind of get my get my brush all nice and all nice and warmed up so to speak so i've got the bottom part of the hat coming in through here and then maybe we've got a nice little kind of ripply thing going up and through here so this kind of separates this from the hat and then what i can do is i can take my brush with that black paint on it i'm going to pick up some of my um custom green as well. So I have black plus my custom green and I get them to blend out to the right hand side. So just getting them to work in with one another, bringing it all the way down in through here. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to kind of rub with the side of my brush to get these colors to blend out to the right. I'm picking up more of my um, custom green just to make sure that it blends the way that I want and that gives me that shadow underneath that side of the hat and allows it to just kind of blend out into the um, into the main section of the hat. So that's kind of how I'm going to approach my shadowy areas. Um, so right now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint and I'll be using a dirty brush the whole time for this um, until I go to my highlights. So I've got black, um, black plus uh, that green on my brush right now. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow up here where the rim of the hat meets the base of the hat in through here. And then this time I think I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel 
and maybe just kind of um, get it to blend up like that. Maybe put a little bit of that green back on. And you can use the um, black plus a little bit of green or maybe a little bit of water, wherever, again, your comfort zone is to how you um, blend out these shadows. You can have them really firm. You can have them really soft. It's, you know, however that dimensional element works for you. If you want it to go like it's dipping way down, you make it really dark. If you want it to look just, you know, muted a little bit, you don't make it so dark. So I'm going to pick out, I just picked up a little bit more black and my... Um, regular green I'm gonna put or my custom green I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow right above this nose and then just kind of blend it out making for this um, this part to look like it's maybe dipping down a little bit as or curling under as it's meeting the face so something like that and this just get it to blend in a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow underneath here so this is the edge of my hat of, of my rim and I feel it would be maybe casting a shadow on this little part or maybe this is just the underside of this little part maybe put a little bit up in through here too so wherever you feel that it would be a little bit darker or would have um, you know something is casting a shadow on it if it's curling under you can assume that that would be darker than something that is popping out to the viewer I'm gonna again put some black and my um, on my dirty brush with that original green. This is going to get really dark underneath here so I can have a nice deep shadow in through here. And if this goes all the way black on you, that's okay. You can always add some of that custom green on top of the black. Um, I'm going to get mine to be pretty darn dark, almost black itself, but I'll add a little bit or make sure that a little bit of that green is detected so it doesn't necessarily look a hundred percent black like right now I feel I'm kind of um, running out on my brush so I'm kind of fading it into the um, the main color green I'm gonna pick up the green on my dirty brush eh, a little bit more black it's not dark enough for me so again just making this area in through here pretty dark as it's meeting that little hair in through there and I'm going to bring it right up to where I had that arm so I wanted the darkest for me up in through here but I still want it pretty dark where it meets the arm as well so again I'm just right now kind of um, flipping back between my black and my um, custom green so this way I have nice transition keeping it nice and dark maybe it's a little bit darker up in the crevices with a little bit more black but definitely nice and dark throughout this this whole area that I'm doing right now. So again, custom green plus black are on my brush and making sure that I've got this whole area nice and dark. I want it to really feel like it's got some good dimension and sometimes just going pretty dark in these little crevices is what's gonna add the most dimension to it. So as you go through the, these type of processes, if you're finding that something's not popping out enough or you know you feel like you want it to sink back more you, the contrast of those colors making it nice and dark versus nice and light will help to um, sell those stories or sell that information this is underneath the arm so I'm gonna put a nice shadow underneath the arm and this is the time where you can start eliminating those little visual cues that you had left for yourself to know where that arm meets that cloth so I just got rid of that one I'm gonna go ahead and put and I can put little information of maybe there's a little cuff on the sleeve in through here so you can really have fun with that type of stuff as well now that I've got that on there I can start just kind of rubbing out this darkness into the main into the main color so it almost just kind of fades down from the dark into the light and that'll again give you that nice that nice contrast but I'm you know consciously trying to get these colors to blend in where I feel that they would be blending that's what's going to make a nice convincing kind of fabric so again just a little bit of black on my brush and if you needed or wanted to you could pick up a touch of white I'm going to put my or water I'm going to put a little shadow underneath my little guy in through here so this is just black I do have at this point I put a tiny bit of water on my brush because I know I'm going into this smaller area in through here and sometimes um, for me 
using that bit of moisture on my brush in these small areas helps me to kind of control where I'm putting this darkness and not overdoing it. So that's pretty good. And again, that makes that little person pop out. I'm going to pick up some of my original um, green or my custom green so I can get this to blend in and make sure that I don't have any unpainted areas in through there and then I'll put a tiny bit of a shadow down at the bottom of the um, of the garment maybe a little bit in through here so it almost looks like it's dipping in a little bit in through here so you can play with the um, with that kind of information by just putting little dark spots that will indicate that it's maybe dipping in a little bit and of course we'll be putting highlights in a minute too so that will that will help to make things look like they pop out so anything that's lighter is going to look like it's popping out if it's darker it's going to look like it's receding so that's just a, you know very easy information to digest and kind of translate into the viewer. I'm just picking up my um, custom green right now, making sure that I've got everything colored in before I go ahead and start adding highlights. So that's looking pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more shadow underneath this arm in through here, maybe the bottom side of these arms, maybe going up into the, um, into the sleeve. So again, just a little black with the um, custom green just make sure I've got the bottom side of this arm nice with a little bit of dimension. And now I'm going to wash and dry my, um, my brush so I can add some strategic highlights. So my highlights are going to be my custom green plus white. So I want some bumps and lumps on the top of my hat. So I'm going to put, so I have just white on my brush right now. I'm going to put some white up in through here, some white up in through here. Now I'm going to pick up my custom green and get the, those light areas to blend out into the main area of the hat. So while that white is still wet, I can get it to blend out. I feel that this part of the hat would be pretty light because it is the bump of the head or shows the contour of the head. So I'm gonna try and get that to be lighter than the, the edges of the hat. And I'll do the same thing with the rim. And I'm using white plus my um, custom green to do this highlight. You could pre-mix yourself a lighter version of your, um, of your hat color and that would help to um, give you a nice gradual transition if you're having trouble mixing it on the canvas um, on the fly like I do, you could certainly pre-mix yourself a lighter version and that would help as well. And then I'm just kind of working this in like this, as this, I'll probably bump that up a little bit brighter in a minute, but just right now kind of getting myself this contour um, area of the hat to make it look a little bit brighter. I'm gonna, so I keep picking up right now, I'm picking up my custom green plus white, put a nice light area like this on top of that hat give it on the brim of the hat kind of pull it out so it looks like this fabric is you know the lightest where it's bumping out towards the nose and then it just kind of fades off on either side and again you can really just in explore your your fabric making um, process. Yours does not have to be the same color as mine. It doesn't have to have the same movement as mine, but if you want to have a little bit of dimension, this is, this is how you would do it, putting the lighter areas where you feel that they would pop out the most. So again, custom green plus a little bit of white going on in through here, maybe a little bit in through here, and then just going to kind of blend it out. I like using the edge or the side of my brush that helps me to kind of um, give it a nice natural blend. I'm picking up my custom green to get it to, um, to further blend into the neighboring areas. And again, if you, if you wanted to, you could certainly make different colors. You could make patterns on the hat. Just having it fully painted is really the main goal. If, you know, if yours doesn't have as much um, movement or form to it as mine does that's okay just roll with it let happen what's going to happen it's a gnome hat it can look 101 different ways so just enjoy the process and then down and through here i'm going to use again the white plus my custom green i'm going to have a nice little highlight on the cuff edge of my shirt so a little bit like that and then i can probably just use my remnants on my brush to finish 
the sleeve up in through here, just making sure it's nice and, and fully painted. And then make sure I didn't miss any spots over in through here. So these little smaller areas don't, don't need much. So custom green plus white is going to give me some highlights on my dress right above my shoes too. And then if I want there to look like there's a, oops, I went outside my lines there. <laughs> it's where you get to see if you can paint inside the lines or not. Um, I'm just using a little bit of custom green to give myself the, the movement in the, in the dress down at the bottom. And then maybe um, just make sure that it is blended out. And then if you wanted to amp up that highlight any, you could certainly just pick up white and just make a nice little pop of brightness on there. And then you just fiddle with it until you feel like you've got all the dimension that you wanted. We are going to be, uh, maybe a little bit more on the top. Um, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your dimension in your hat and your clothes, you can, oh, actually we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. You can um, put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the baby's clothes or the kid's clothes or the child's clothes or the baby, no, the infant gnome's clothes. <laughs> I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using purple, uh, custom purple, black and white. And I'm gonna approach it the same way that I did mom's clothing. So I'm gonna put my shadows in the places that I feel need shadows and then I'll put my highlights in the places that I want to pop out, like above the shoes and above the nose and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start with a bit of um, black on my brush. I'm gonna start up at the head like I did for mom and this is gonna be above the, um, the rim of the hat. So I've got black on my brush, plus a little bit of water. I used a little bit of water because I know I'm in such a small area. And like I was saying earlier, when I'm working in these small areas, the water really helps, or a liquid medium, if that's your um, blending pleasure, that the, it helps to just kind of keep that paint a little bit wet for a little bit longer, which allows you to kind of spread it out a little bit more. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of a shadow at right in through here where I want that hat to look like it's kind of um, dented in a little bit. So something like that. I'll put a little bit of a shadow down the bottom side of the hat just like I did for mom. So this is pretty much following the same process that I did for mom's. I'll put um, a little bit of shadow in th around the um, nose in through here. So again, this is just a little bit of black I haven't picked up my purple yet because I'm doing just fine with the black on my brush, getting it to kind of blend out with that bit of moisture on my brush. So if you're going through this process and, and yours isn't blending the way that you want, you could certainly pick up some of that base color, um, which I will most likely do just to make sure that it, I've got good coverage. Again, just a little bit of black on my brush right now. I'm gonna put a shadow underneath mom's hands because I feel that there would be one casting a shadow upon the youngin's clothing in through here. So something like that works for me. And then I'm gonna pick up my, um, my custom purple just to make sure that I've got good coverage in through here. And again, I will use um, this custom purple with my highlights too. So I'm just using it right now to make sure that I have a good coverage and that my shadow blends in with its neighboring, um, with the neighboring color. You could, if, um, if you wanted to, you could make a different shade of purple, again, for either your highlights or your shadows, that's gonna be up to you, but this seems to be working out just the way I want it to, so I'm not, not straying from it at all, because it's, it's doing exactly what I want it to. And then again, just bringing this right up to that shadow. You can even overlap the shadow a little bit to get it to blend. That's gonna be um, however smooth you want your blend to be. I'm just going for something that's gonna give us some nice um, dimension to it, but I don't, I don't need it to be a perfect blend at this point. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna start adding my highlight. So this is my custom purple or my light purple plus white on my brush at the same time. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a highlight up and through here, 
I'm going to have a highlight on top of that nose area, a little bit more white on my brush just to get that to uh, go in. And because I'm working in such a small area, I might be able to just kind of travel from one light area to the next while, you know, kind of all at once. And then I can come back maybe with a little bit of my custom purple and just get it to blend in. So when you're working in smaller areas like this, if you know if you can get away with just kind of working more efficiently and quicker by doing multiple areas at the same time, whereas like I did the top of the hat, the rim and the highlight down here all in one kind of brush stroke because I knew it wasn't gonna dry too quickly on me. So that would provide me with time to go back and before it dried get it to blend out but when I was working on mom I didn't have that kind of time because it was a bigger area so I knew that I needed to just work more independently on one area before I moved to the next and then just fiddle with it make any little adjustments that you want we're going to be using um, our we're going to use this small brush for the next step as well so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our noses and our hands. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my skin tone, brown, black, and white. And if I need to or want to use any other colors, I certainly will. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm in essence gonna add shadows at the bottom of each piece maybe a little bit around the edges if I feel like maybe I want a little shadow coming up into these sleeves or if I feel I want a little sh more shadow around the edge of the nose, I'll do it there. And then I'm gonna be adding highlights. So the highlights are gonna be up towards the top of my noses and the tops of the hands and I'll get that to blend in with the skin tone. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time and a little bit of water just to um, make sure that I can kind of blend this nice and um, fluidly. So I'm going to start down in through here. I've got black and brown on my brush and this shadow could be cast a little bit or be smushing down into this um, hat a little bit too. So just making sure that I've got a nice um, dark kind of transition between the hat and the nose and that it's going to kind of um, gradually get lighter as it comes into the um, into the, the center kind of part of the nose. So I really wanna get a nice shadow around in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some brown paint without washing my brush. And this is gonna get it to blend in just a little bit more as it's coming into the nose. So just using a real um, loose kind of brush stroke in a curved manner as if I'm painting right around the circle. And because I'm using a little bit of water on my brush, that's allowing me to get a little bit of translucency to it and get it to blend in with that skin tone a little bit more. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my skin tone without washing my brush and just get this to these edges to blend in with that shadowy area. So this just helps with getting kind of a smooth transition from the outer exterior part of the nose into the interior part of the nose. And you might find that you want, you know, your nose bigger or smaller or a, a different color than mine. That's totally fine. So I'm going, that's looking pretty cute to me. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other skin pieces. So tiny bit of black and brown on my brush, making sure I've got the dramatic, um, shadow kind of underneath and getting it to go up the sides, especially on these noses in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown to do kind of that next transitional color into the skin. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my skin tone to just go right and get it to blend right in with that skin. Again, I'll be doing a highlight on them as well, but this just gets my party started. So again, black and brown is gonna be for my hands. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow coming up into this sleeve. Black and brown is where I'm, where's, where I'm starting. And again, if you wanna use a little bit of water on your brush, that will help to give you a little bit of um, a more continual brush stroke 
allowing you to get this shadowy type of color to go a little bit farther. I'm going to put a tiny bit in the crook of the thumbs. So again, just a little bit of black and brown, just a teeny tiny bit in through there. Then wipe my brush off, pick up my brown paint to get this to start blending into the skin tone. So brown paint to get it to start blending in. And then I'm going to use my skin tone. Oops, I forgot the thumb on this side. I'll have to I have to get that to blend. So I picked up some skin tone just to get that shadow part to blend in as well. I'll just do this with a little bit of the skin tone on my brush. There we go, that works. And then do the same thing over here. So now that I've got the shadowy areas on, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the highlight on. So this is gonna be the area that I feel is popping out the most to the viewer and that has the most highlight from whatever the above light sources or whatever the light source is. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to be picking up white plus a little bit of my skin tone. So white plus a teeny tiny bit of my skin tone. I'm going to put it in the area that I want to be the lightest. So I'm going for an upper region up here. It does not have to be at the tippy tippy top um, because if you if you want it to look a little bit rounder, keep the highlight a little bit away from the edge. So I've got white plus a little bit of my skin tone. So something like that. And then I start blending it out. I'm gonna pick up some of my skin tone on my dirty brush to get it to blend out. Keep picking up my skin tone. As these edges of my highlight are drying, I can get them to blend out like that and if you need to put a little water on your brush again the water will help you to kind of keep it wet a little bit longer and just keep spreading it out so i'm going to let this set for a minute i might bump up that highlight and make the highlight a little bit brighter in a minute but i'm going to just i don't want to overwork it because if you overwork it you also run the risk of lifting that paint right off the canvas so while that is kind of um drying i'm going to do the same thing to the other part so white plus a teeny bit of my skin tone put my highlight in right up in through here and then go ahead and pick up some of my skin tone and blend it out so again it started i started with my white and a tiny bit of my skin tone and then i picked up the skin tone so that way i'm in essence kind of gradually going darker as i go farther away so again, just picking up white plus my skin tone to put my highlights on my hands. So I've got it on my, my, on my thumb area and then maybe, maybe a little bit in through here and then just pick up my skin tone to get it to blend out. So at each section was the same process, which was adding the shadow, blending it to the main skin area and then adding the highlight and bl blending it to the main skin area. So if you keep that process in mind, you can really build anything. Anything is possible if you understand or um, identify in your head where that light source is coming from. I'm just pic picturing my light source to be above and that guides me into knowing that I want this light or this highlight to be kind of in the upper region. I'm making that mom's nose a little bit brighter with adding just a touch more white on my brush. Get this to be a little bit brighter. We want to make sure that that highlight really pops out. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it, making sure that my skin tone really blended into the shadow area. So if there's any adjustments that I felt were necessary, I would certainly do that. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your skin done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the pacifier and finish the shoes. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, white, and red. And I'm gonna have like a nice pink 
pacifier which is going to complement all the beautiful flowers that we're going to be putting on you could certainly have yours whatever color that you'd like i'm going to be making mine a little bit smaller than the nose but you could have yours again as big or as small as you'd like so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first just make myself a pacifier color so i'm going to take a little bit of white and blend it in with some of my red so i'm just going for a like a pinky tone but again you could make yours whatever color you'd like. So I'm thinking that this is pretty good for me. I just want it to be different than my skin tone, so that's that's perfect. So once I've got the color that I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a circle that I want to overlap my nose a little bit. And it could be an oval, it could be an octagon, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna come almost halfway down my hands, so maybe something like this. You can have as much fun with this as you want. I'm going to color this section in with that pinky color. And it doesn't have to be perfect yet because we're going to be doing a couple of details in a minute. And then on the bottom side of it, I'm going to be doing um, like the part that you would hold on to, the handle part. I'm going to have this maybe coming down, maybe in this vicinity something like this and of course yours doesn't have to be <laughs> they they can all be different we can make different kinds of things maybe he's got a, a I don't know a lollipop or something in his mouth something like that that looks pretty good so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and I'm gonna go and finish my shoes so I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush and my shoes I'm just gonna have brown so I don't need to do anything fancy to them. I'm going to start with black paint to give myself um, a little bit of information on them. So for my shoes down here, what I'm going to do is I take my black paint and I'm going to kind of outline the sole. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a black line in through there. We're also going to be doing a shadow underneath our, um, our gnome. So that's going to help us to ground these a little bit more but right now I'm just kind of giving them the shape that I want so just a little bit of black is going to um, separate that sole from the top part and I'm giving it with a little bit of a curve so it shows a little shape to the shoe and you know you could just have little box shoes if you wanted or little round shoes like my baby's just going to have some round shoes I'm going to um, I'm going to pick up now a little bit of brown on my dirty brush. So I have brown and black. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow up where the shoe is going right underneath the, um, the dress or the clothing in through here. So that, again, will help you give a little... You don't have to go all the way across. I'm going to actually be doing a highlight on the top in a minute. This is just giving you a little bit of that, um, that dimensional element. So just a little bit of a shadow over here on the left side as that shoe is um, kind of going underneath that clothing a little bit. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up just brown paint. I'm gonna do another layer of brown on the shoe just so I make sure that I have good coverage and that it doesn't end up looking too streaky by the time I'm done. Brown has a tendency to be pretty transparent or translucent and I just want to make sure that I have a good coverage so I'm just doing an, a quick second layer and this will also help me to um, put a nice highlight on there, a nice believable highlight with, um, with this color on here. It gives me a nice more solid color to the paint as well or to the, um, to the shoes. So just a second layer of the brown and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint on my dirty brush so white on my dirty brush and I'm going to add a little bit of highlight in through here, a little bit of highlight in through here. So just streaking it through. Even if that paint underneath is wet, that's great. That's what's going to add the, um, the nice um, transition. So again, just picking up some white. I want the top of these shoes to have a nice highlight in through here. So white is going to give me a nice highlight and then I can I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then I'm just blending it out a little bit with the um, with the brown that was already still a little wet. So if your brown underneath isn't still wet, that's okay. Just pick up a little bit of brown on your brush and you can get it to um, blend out. And again, this doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white to give my um, little 
one some highlight in through there and then I would just blend it out with either brown or just that wet white paint if the um, if the color underneath was not still wet. And then you just fiddle with it until you want to finish those shoes. I've got to finish my little pacifier. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a shadow and then some highlights. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I'm going to put a shadow underneath this, my brush was dripping a little bit. I'm going to put a little shadow underneath this top part. So I'm just going to take my black and I'm underlining lining a little bit um, underneath here. The open circle is going to be the part that's on top. So I'm just taking a little bit of black, underlining that. I'm going to underline this bottom part. I can push it a little bit harder down at the bottom. That'll make it look like it's away from the clothing a little bit. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of a shadow on the underside of this ring. So that's going to be up in through here. I'm going to find where I want that to be and I just pull it down a little bit like that and then I pull it down a little bit like this. So that would be the underside of the top part of that ring. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint. I'm going to have um, kind of like a highlight up in this right hand side but I want it to look like there's a little bit of texture up in this top part so I'm gonna kind of pull these um, streaks like towards the center of the pacifier like this like there's some texture to it I'm also gonna put a little bit of a highlight in through here so white right now is where I'm starting I'm gonna pick up the pink in a minute but right now just starting with a little bit of white maybe a little bit of a highlight up and through there. Now I'm going to pick up that pink and get all of this to just make sense and blend in together. So pink is on my brush right now with with whatever remnants of the white I had on there and then I'm just really making sure that I have a nice second coat all around the pacifier and make any little fine-tune um, adjustments that I feel are necessary and then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your pacifier and your shoes done, you can put this, um, I just picked up a little white too. You can pick up the, or you can put this small brush away, take out your um, medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our hair and we're gonna put a shadow underneath our mom. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, tan, the tan that we made for the hair, and white. So what I'm going to in essence do, be doing is I'll be doing some shadow underneath the hat. I'm going to put a little pattern or shadow for inside the, the um, rows of the braids. Um, I'm going to put a shadow underneath here and then we'll put some nice highlights on our hair as well. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush and I'm going to put my shadow up um, underneath my little hat. This is really just going to kind of start the process and give me a good place to um, start. So I put my shadow on and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull it down into that, that braided um, direction. So just down in a in a kind of carefree way. So a little bit of black and brown. Going to do the same thing over in through here. I think I want a little bit more black so I can make make this look like it's coming out of the darkness from underneath the hat. So a little bit of black and brown going up in through this area, making sure I've got some good coverage. And then I just kind of pull it down as if the pieces of hair are coming from underneath that hat. So we've got that going on. Now I'm going to put some brown paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a roadmap for these um, braids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the indent on this left hand side and give myself a continual line towards like the center of two away. And <laughs> So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have brown on my brush. So I'm going to bring this in like this and then bring it to about here. I'll do the same thing for this. Bring it like that, bring it like that, and then bring it like that. And then when I go to do the other side, I can just kind of connect it 
with this one. So it'll connect like that. And that just gives me a nice little um, pattern for my, for my braid. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna start from here and I just bring it in a natural kind of way like that. I can bring this in like this, like this, and like this. And then I go on the other side and this just kind of connects to that one, to that one, to that one, and to that one. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but that gives you a good little roadmap. And then while that's kind of um, just drying and getting nice and, and settled, I'm gonna go in, and I have black and brown on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and do the shadow underneath the, um, underneath the, the mom. So I have black and brown on my brush, I'm gonna do it nice and dark in through here maybe a little bit more black so we can get a nice dark area in through there. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub it out because I, I want it to be pretty dark where it's meeting her um, garment, but I don't necessarily um, have it in my head that there's a long shadow around her. So I'm really just kind of getting it in this vicinity. We're gonna have lots of flowers and stuff like that. This just helps to make sure that she looks grounded and she's not floating in the air. I just picked up a little bit more brown and now I'll just start to get it to rub out into that ground area. And I'm gonna bring it a little bit past those shoes. So maybe the, you know, the shoes look like they're casting a little bit of a shadow on it. And again, I don't need to do much. I'm just looking to give myself, again, that, uh, that element of um, three-dimensional aspect. So it's got that, that shadow underneath. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put the highlights on my braids. So that's just gonna be with my tan and white. So I'm gonna pick up tan plus white on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna just loosely give myself the makings of my, of my braid in through here. So I'm using these curved type of um, brush strokes making it look like they are kind of following that original pattern that we put in place. And I'm not doing much. You can overlap that brown area, that interior area a little bit. I'm just trying to make it look like it's a whole bunch of pieces of hair that are just crisscrossing over one another. And again, it doesn't you know, need to be one individual strand. I think I need a little darkness in through here. I'm picking up a tiny bit of brown. I feel like I need one of these little interior lines in through here. So I just picked up a little bit of my brown to, to get that accomplished. And then I would just kind of keep adding these layers until I felt that it was good. I'm gonna pick up some of my tan and white again to give myself a little bit of um, texture down here on this little guy and through here. And you can again cross over that brown so it doesn't look like such a firm outline. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So brown or tan and white is on my brush and just giving myself this, um, these pieces of hair allowing for the light strands and the dark strands to look like real hair and have some have some good dimension to them and then if you feel that you do too much you can always bring back some of that original tan feel free to have fun with it we'll be putting little ties on the edges of the um, braids when we get to our flowers and we're using similar colors on our brush but right now this is all i'm going to be doing for them and we'll be using our uh, medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this medium brush and that's looking pretty good and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red and white. I'm gonna be going for a nice simplistic and playful daisy style flower, but you can certainly make whatever kind of flower that you'd like. We're doing the base or the majority of the flowers now, but we'll come back on a, another step and do little details in the middle. So I did notice when I went on my sipping break <laughs> that I missed my hair on my little baby. So I'm gonna do that first right now. I'm just picking up some of my tan plus a little bit of white on my um, medium brush and I'm just really gonna flick this out. I need it to kind of go on top of um, or overlapping the, um, 
mom's shirt so it looked unfinished so I wanted to make sure that I finished that for you guys so that's good now so now I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and finish my or do my flowers so I'm just gonna be using red and white on my brush at the same time so this is going to make a whole bunch of various tones of pink and white and red and it's just going to look a, a really fun i'm going to put them everywhere they're going to be like framing around the canvas they're going to be in her hat they're going to be around the back of her so just have fun do put them wherever you want them to go they can go in any place you would like so i'm going to put a couple coming peeking out of her hat so again i'm just doing these like daisy style um petals that are gonna be kind of curved towards the the center of the flower i'm gonna have a little tiny one kind of popping out over in through here and then again like i said we'll be doing another step where we'll put little details and centers to it and everything i'm gonna have one coming out her hat in through here so again red and white are on my brush i want this to have some nice big fat kind of um petals on it so i'm pushing my brush pretty darn hard and because i'm using both of these colors on my brush it's a nice two-tone effect to uh, maybe this is going to curl up let's make this curl up and out there we go that's fun um it'll give you this great dimensional element to it without really having to do much work um let's see where else am i going to put them i'm going to put a whole bunch up in this corner of my canvas up and through here so if i want them to be big i push my brush a little bit harder if i want them to be small i can just kind of push just the little tip of my brush if i want them to overlap one another i can certainly do that as well so again i'm just gonna have a whole bunch of fun pushing my brush making these beautiful little daisy kind of uh floral pattern maybe we'll put a little white one in through here so you can pick up your white and red in any type of um order that you want like i just picked up a little bit of white for those two little ones uh, without washing my brush so there was a couple of lighter ones that happened and you know you can certainly just enjoy the experience it's just about having fun and being playful and you know putting them wherever you want i like them i like it when they kind of come partially over the side so that you'll see i do quite often and coming in different directions so i like my flowers to have some you know organic kind of thoughts to them and i'm going to put a couple of small ones in through here and maybe kind of coming out around her um, braid of sorts so maybe maybe they've been kind of braided into her her hair as she was getting ready for her day out with her little little tiny gnome baby <laughs> and then of course i'll do a couple of little details around that too maybe we've got some coming out the side behind her so and if you bump into like her clothing or whatever as you're doing this you can always come back and make little corrections maybe we've got a nice vibrant red one over in through here and make them whatever size you want what in whatever direction you want it's again your painting enjoy the process have fun with it maybe we've got one over in through here i think i'm definitely going to have couple coming big ones coming off of the side in through here and i i like using these multiple colors at the same time specifically because it gives you that you know it allows you to have these multi-tones again without without doing much work you just you know have have fun with playing with it i'm going to have a whole bunch in through here maybe these are going to have some multi-layered to them so i'll do some dark a dark one in the back maybe i'll do a light one coming in the front with more white on it and again i'm just enjoying the process that looks pretty yeah and then maybe i've got some coming down in through here maybe just some little baby ones coming off the bottom of my canvas just again to kind of make it look like you know she's out in a 
I don't know, a little flower field somewhere. <laughs> maybe I've got a little one coming over in through here. And then I'm just going to maybe step back and see if I've got as many flowers as I want. If I want more, I'll add more. And then um, I think this one I want a little bit bigger. There we go. And then we're going to use this or no, we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do um, little ties on her braids and centers on our flowers. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, maybe a little bit of red as well. So I'm gonna do the little ties first. I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint. You could use brown, you could use purple, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of a um, curved line for the tie itself. And then I like to, I find myself doing like little bows <laughs> when I do these kind of little details, but you can really make yours into whatever that you'd like. I'll do the same thing over on this side over here. I've got a little bit of a tie like this, and then maybe I've got my, my little bow, <laughs> my little rabbit ears, and then a little thing like that. Then I'll just wipe my brush off, pick up a tiny bit of white paint, give myself maybe a little bit of a, of a streak of a highlight in through here, maybe a little button for the um, tie part. And again, this is just intended to look like it's being held together by something. It could be a piece of twine. It could be whatever, whatever you want it to be. This just gives you that extra bit of detail. So then the centers of the flowers. Again, I'm just making these look a little bit like a daisy with a center. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black and wherever I feel that I want to see a little bit of center. So maybe, maybe this one's got a bit coming out in through here and then um, I can put maybe a little bit of red in there if I want to give it a little bit of color so something like that so just a tiny bit of black maybe I've got this one in through here has a little center to it and if it's too black I just pick up a little bit of red or you could even do yellow or white or whatever color works for you um, I think maybe I've got a little center over here. So right now I just have a little bit of red and black on my brush. So that'll take care of using, um, or me having to, uh, pick up again. So just red and black, just kind of dotting in a little center. Maybe we've got one over into here. So this little, um, center that I'm doing will just break up the monotony of the color too. So if you've got a lot of the same thing going on, being able to pop in a little bit of a darker note here or there will help to just kind of break things up. And then you can fiddle with it as much as you want. Uh, we're gonna use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it, dry it, and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush I think I'm going to go bottom left on this one with red paint. I'm going to sign it right here in this little spot. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or make a special symbol. Whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very playful Mother's Day inspired image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.